And this is a picture of our campuses in Kyoto, one located in Kameoka and another one located in Uzumasa. Except for the bioenvironmental students, all the students will be studying in Uzumasa campus where it is located inside Kyoto city with having a all brand new lecture rooms and facilities. Of course, our engineering students will also be located at Uzumasa campus. And here are some pictures of our student life. We have a lot of events ongoing as well as extracurricular activities. And we also have seminar, workshops, and career support center for, uh, to help our students get a job inside Japan or outside Japan. We also have cafeteria inside our, cap uh, our campus with uh, providing international cuisine as well as Japanese food. And here are some more pictures of our students as well as uh, facilities and foods provided at our campus. And going back to the topic, our program, what we offer for international students is called the Faculty of Engineering or simply known as QRC. And QRC has four important features. First, we provide our students with the old English international program, including Japanese students. So basically, when international students apply to our university, they don't need any Japanese language ability. If they have a good, fair enough English ability, then they can apply to our engineering program. And second, our focus is real industry oriented courses for our engineering students. So they will have many opportunities to have a laboratory workshop, internships, and collaborative research with real manufacturing companies in Japan. And third, we provide our students with intensive Japanese language program for international students. So when applying to our university, they don't need any Japanese language ability, but after enrollment, we will have a placement test for about Japanese language for international students, and they will learn a Japanese language for over two years without additional fee. And this language course is mandatory for undergraduate program and for graduate school, it is a totally optional, but without additional fee. And lastly, but which is most important, is that this Faculty of Engineering uh, program is a brand new program conducted or established in our university. For our postgraduate course, it has started from September 2020, and for undergraduate program, it will be starting from September 2021. And the Department of Power Engineering program is called Mechanical and Electrical Systems Engineering, which we have only one time intake every year, which will be in September. And we uh, offer our students with three courses, Bachelor of Engineering, Master of Engineering, and PhD of Engineering. And as a first generation student who will be coming from 2021 September, or who will be enrolling, the first part students have um, will be coming to our university from over 20 countries and they will join COAS as a community. And for the, two, uh, for the graduate student, two, 2021 September intake, second batch student, the student is, will be actually coming from more than 10 countries and they will join COAS. So although we, have, we are a very new university or newly established faculty, we as a first generation student, we were able to gather a lot of uh, students from all around the world. And we are expecting more application on 2022 September intake. And now I would like to briefly introduce about the course outline. For the undergraduate course outline, our program duration is four years. In the first year, we will introduce our students with Japanese classes, orientation and general classes, and review on engineering, math, and physics. And we will also introduce with engineering and design classes for our Japanese and international students. And from year two and year three, we will pro uh, provide with more advanced engineering classes with laboratory workshops and pre capstone projects. And final year, we let our students do a capstone project and laboratory work. And our undergraduate program's major goal is to educate the young street smart global engineers for our future industries beyond the borders. So we don't let our students do a bachelor's thesis, uh, thesis at the end of our NOAA's final year. Instead, we will let our students do a capstone program. And for the postgraduate course, uh, especially for the master's program, this is uh, what we provide for our students. For our master's program students, the program duration will be two years. 
During the first year, we provide our students to let them study the basic engineering courses in advanced level with exercise and research and master's thesis writing. And um, for the Japanese classes, it is totally optional. And for the second year, our students will continuously do the specialized engineering classes and work on exercise and research, and they will have a master's thesis research and oral defense at the final year. Unlike the undergraduate program, our postgraduate course will be more focusing on research-based curriculum. So students have to work on with their research topic and choose a CUA's desired supervisor before application period, and which I will explain it to you later. And going back to the undergraduate program, what is our uniqueness of our engineering program is that we provide our students with multidisciplinary engineering program. So which simply means that we don't have a specific major in our engineering program because we only have one department, but we let our students learn a diverse scale of engineering, like such as mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, computer science, and so on. And the reason why we are providing this multidisciplinary engineering program is we want our students to acquire and solidify the necessary engineering skills in various fields demanded by the real life to solve and create new solutions to the world. Simply means that we want our students to acquire and hands-on engineering skills during four-year program duration. And our class hour is around 90 minutes per block and uh, there will be seven blocks per day. And another uniqueness is, as I have mentioned to you previously, we provide our students with industry academia collaboration, which is simply called the capstone program. Our students will be splitting into a small group of four to five students at the final year, and they will challenge with the industrial company program in a collaboration with the real Japanese manufacturing company. For example, there might be a company asking our students how can we control two drones with one remote controller. And our students will make an analysis and prototyping for a company to make an innovative and creative solution. And why we are implementing this kind of curriculum is that we want our students to learn the importance of working in a team and dealing with conflict that companies are facing in our modern society. And also we provide our students a Japanese classes and this will be conducted in a small size class and they will be learning or mastering a minimum Japanese language, ability to work at a Japanese company and math and physics. Um, all the lectures will be followed by exercises and total study hours are about 150% compared to other Japanese universities are providing. In the first year, as I have mentioned, our students will review on math and physics, but we also provide a review classes on physical chemistry, dynamics, and information technology as well. From the second to third year, they will um, learn more about specialized classes like communication, energy actuators, electrical engineering, electronic uh, engineering, robotics, computer science, and so on. So even though each student have a different academics or academic background of math and physics, they don't have to worry about it because we will uh, review clearly on the first year. And why we can do this very unique engineering program here at Japan is because we have invited a very successful two academic and business leaders from Japanese world, famous world. And the one leader is called Mr. Nagamori Shigenobu. He's a CEO of world number one motor company called Nidec Corporation. And he has more than 300 subsidiary companies around the world. And another leader is called Mr. Masahumi Maeda. He's the president of KUAS and also known as a former executive vice president of Tokyo University, the number one national university in Japan. And under these two strong leaders, we have recruited the very talented and globally experienced professors from top national universities in Japan, as well as international universities. So they are waiting our international students to enroll at KUAS and to have a very unique uh, engineering curriculum together here at Kyoto University of Advanced Science. And um, supplementary information about NIDIC, NIDIC Corporation. NIDIC company has around um, factory bases and R&D bases around the world, especially focusing on Southeast Asia, Europe, and United States. And with using Chairman's connection, we provided some global internship challenges, including engineering students and other related faculty students to have a overseas experiences. 
Before the COVID-19 outbreak, um, we have provided our students to go to overseas and have a um, meeting session or presentation experiences with the needed workers as well as for visit and after visit. We are having this internship uh, program actually through online right now, but after the COVID-19 cases eases out, then we are planning to regain back this internship activities as well. And engineering students can also join this internship challenges. And if you would like to know more about our academic professor's background, then please visit our website as well. And the Harvard Faculty of Engineering and Building was actually completed on 2020 February, which simply means that our facilities are very brand new for our engineering students to use. At our engineering building, we have um, library, computer rooms, workshop labs, science plaza, student dormitory, only dedicated for our engineering students. And here are some more pictures of our engineering building and also our advanced facilities for our engineering program. And our own campus dormitory, international students can choose to live in our dormitory and the fee is around 600 US dollar per month, including the bedding fee, but the furniture, maintenance, breakfast, dinner, utility costs are all included in the price. The room type will be completely in a private room with shared bathroom and kitchen, and they can live at our dormitory for one year. And these are the pictures of our on-campus dormitory. There's a cherry blossom trees around our engineering building, so it is very beautiful. And also we have prayer room inside the engineering building and also on campus dormitory. And um, as an additional information, our cafeteria has provided a vegetable meal. So if the student is religious, there's no worry because there's a prayer room and also we provide vegetable meals for those religious students. Another information is that international students are permitted to have part-time jobs for 28 hours per week in Japan with student visa. And also students can choose to live off campus. Our admission team will introduce accommodation company for international students to find housing outside campus. And even though the students didn't choose to live in our own campus dormitory, Center of Kyoto City has many Muslim and vegan friendly restaurants for international residents. So students can enjoy even though if they choose to live outside. And uh, our university also facilitates with many extracurricular activities for students besides studying. If the students like to join the sports club activities, then we can provide them with baseball, basketball, soccer, tennis, and so on. And if the students like to be more indulged with cultural club activities, then they can uh, be in a student association for like manga society, Japanese music, sado, tea ceremony, arts, and so on. And that was a brief introduction of our university. And now I would like to introduce about application procedure for 2022 September intake. And for the application for 2022 September intake, we have a several eligibility before students can apply. For undergraduate program, um, international students need to complete a 12 year national school education in your home country if they are studying in local curriculum. Um, I think there are some schools uh, providing uh, education in 11 years, but 11 years is not eligible to apply for our university. So if the students have studied in 11 years school education, then please consult our admission office or yes education for further information. And for the international school students, they need to have is the IB diploma qualification or A-level qualification or other kind of international uh, qualification offered around the world. And we accept those as the eligibility of those students. And for the master's program, um, we need to graduate from a university at the bachelor's level. We don't accept diploma, uh, national diploma, higher diploma, or associate degree as the eligibility for master's program. So please be careful about this. And um, also, if the student didn't uh, graduate university, but they possess a bachelor degree from a certain kind of educational institution, then we also accept those as a master's uh, program eligibility or master's student applicants. And for the PhD program, if they possess master's degree or professional degree from 
an educational institution, then they can apply for our university. And just for additional information for master and PhD program, even though the students did not graduate from engineering department, for example, they graduated from business or IT or humanities, we still accept uh, those students to apply as long as they have a sufficient uh, skill to understand about math and physics and as well as engineering skills. And for online application for undergraduate program, there are several documents and test scores that students have to prepare. For the undergraduate program, they have to prepare a photograph and passport copy and, and photo ID and the application essay on writing about why they want to study in Cuba or in Japan. And also academic transcripts um, translated in English for last two years of grade. So if the student is currently studying a grade 12 uh, course, then they need to submit a grade 10 and grade 11 academic transcript. And if the student has already graduated from high school, then what they have to provide to Kuwas is the grade 11 and grade 12 academic transcript. And also uh, we request students to submit certificate of graduation or expected and one recommendation letter, a personal reference from the school teacher. And uh, as an optional request, student can apply for scholarship request. It's not a separate application at our university. They can apply during our online application. And uh, um, we request international students to take um, language proficiency test course taken in this slide, which includes TOEFL IBT more than 75, IELTS more than 5.5, PT more than 50, or Duolingo English test more than 105. TOEIC, TOEFL PBT, EJU, JPT are not accepted at our university. But for international students who studied curriculum in under language instruction of English medium for more than three years or during high school time, then they can apply for language prophecy waiver request. And students who have studied during IB diploma, then they also will be automatically freed from taking this language test course. And for the standardized test result, there is no minimum scores, but as a general rule, students need to submit a standardized test results available in home country to show their math and physics ability. And if the students cannot submit standardized test results, then please consult our international admissions team before applying to CUAS. Otherwise, this will be a required document. And application fee is around 5,000 Japanese yen and around 45 US dollars. There's no refund and no waiver for application fee. So if the student doesn't pay this application fee, we will not process the document. And as for the standardized test results, I have made a chart for our agent today to understand more about what kind of document they can um, submit. And for all the students, um, they can submit uh, SAT reasoning test or subject test as a standardized test result and also we accept ACT and some countries I believe the Japanese examination called EJU is available so EJU is also okay as long as they take math and physics and for international school students they can submit the predicted score of IB diploma or predicted score of international A level and for the local curriculum student if they have local test scores available like Ujian National in Indonesia or National High School Examination in Vietnam or Higher Secondary School Certificate HSSC in Bangladesh or Pakistan or so on, then we also accept these kind of uh, national university examination score as well as a standardized test result. But if students cannot submit one of these test scores, then please kindly consult our international office for further instruction. And for the school uh, fee structures for undergraduate program, we collect around 15,000 US dollar per year from our student. And this course breakdown chart includes admission fee, tuition fee, membership fee, and accidental insurance fee. But the admission fee and accidental insurance fee will be one time pay set off, so it will be cheaper from second year. And for the monthly living expenses wise, there will be a uh, dormitory fee happening and the food and personal expenses. So at least students have to spend 1,040 US dollar per month to support living in Japan or in Kyoto city. 
I know for some countries, the tuition fees and monthly living expenses are quite expensive um, in compared to their home countries. So what we provided is the scholarship opportunity for international students. As I have said, um, the original fee for first year will be 15,000 US dollar. But if the students are selected as a scholarship recipient student, then we provide them with 30%, 50%, or 100% tuition and admission fee waiver reduction. If the student is selected as a top star student, then we provide them with super quality scholarship, which we uh, we have admission fee and tuition fee for 100%. And also we provide them with 900 US dollar per month to support their living allowance uh, stipend. And the criteria for getting either quasi scholarship or super quasi scholarship is just no minimum GPA, no minimum score, no subject requirements. We will review the student's documents holistically so everyone has a chance to get our scholarship from our university. But please do remember that because we don't have a set criteria for this scholarship program, the competition among the applicants will be very high. And after the document screening is over, there will be an online interview if we, if our international admissions office have requested a student. And if the students are selected as an interview, then please guide them to take the interview. And if the students are not selected as an interview, then that means your document was already sufficed to persuade our QRC professors. And after the online interview schedule is over, we will give you with letter of acceptance, QRC scholarship announcement, enrollment procedures, and guidelines. And as for the important admission timeline for 2022 September intakes, the application will be starting from this year. The first round, which is called the early entry, will be starting from October 1st and will be closed on October 31st. And offers and scholarship announcement will be released within this year on December 27th. And if the student missed the chance of applying early entry, then there still will be a regular entry as a second round. The application will be opening on December 1st and it will be closed on January 14th and offers and scholarship announcement will be released on March 4th. And for the final entry, the final round, um, they can apply through February 15th and the application will be closed on March 4th. And offers and scholarship announcement will be released on April 22nd. The content of each application will be the same, but students can only apply either one of these three application timings. And for the scholarship opportunity chances, we will um, distribute scholarship as equal as each entry. So please don't worry about it. Please submit the document when students are very uh, confident and ready to apply for course. And if you have any problems regarding to your application, please consult our uh, ES education team for your necessary assistance. And now I would like to talk about uh, our postgraduate program. Unlike undergraduate program for postgraduate course, um, there will be a pre-application review as a first procedure. As I have said, our program is a research-based engineering program with master's thesis writing. So students have to choose the right supervisor before applying to our course uh, program. And what they have to do during the pre-application review is that they need to submit CV research plan and desired supervisor request during pre-application review period. For master's program, students can choose up to three supervisors as their mentor for their research topic. And for the PhD program, um, students can choose one supervisor, uh, desired supervisor as their mentor for their PhD course. After our desired supervisor have reviewed their CV and research plan, the consent will be granted and the supervisor name will be announced. If the consent is not granted for the student, then I'm sorry, but student cannot apply to, her, to our online application for this year term. And uh, for the important notes for this pre-application review, this pre-application review will be closed the day before online application opens, so students have to be well prepared advance to the online application. And for the consent granted and acceptance, consent granted does not guarantee the acceptance to course. It only guarantees the application to our online application. So please be careful about this. And once the pre-application review is over, we will start the online application for graduate school. 
for the graduate school, what they have to uh, prepare is um, basically the same with undergraduate program, but uh, they of course need to submit the name of desired supervisor's name with consent granted and photograph and passport copy, application essay, academic transcript, certificate of graduation, research plan, and at least one recommendation letter from the previous educator, uh, educator in institution. And for the required test scores, they need to submit either TOEFL or IBT more than 80, IELTS more than 6.0, PT more than 50, or Duolingo English test more than 105. And as an optional request, again, they can apply for scholarship request. And for the language proficiency waiver request, students who have graduated from university in English speaking countries like Australia, America, or England can apply for uh, waiver request. And students who have graduated from university with all English program at your local uh, universities and they can apply for our English fever. An application fee is around 5,000 Japanese yen, around 45 US dollar, and there's no refund for it and no waiver for it. And the fee structures for postgraduate course is uh, 11,000 US dollar per year. It includes an admission fee, tuition fee, and accidental insurance fee. But again, the admission fee and accidental insurance fee is only one time pay set off. So it will be cheaper from second year. And there will be dormitory, the food and personal expenses fee happening. So at least 1,040 US dollar per month will be needed to support their living. And uh, for the scholarship opportunity, it's all the same as undergraduate program. We provide our students with 30%, 50%, or 100% tuition and admission fee waiver. And for the super course scholarship, um, it's also available in our master's program. But for PhD program, there's no 30% or 50% scholarship. If the student is selected as a scholarship recipient student, it will be automatically either course scholarship 100% or 100% uh, reduction in addition to the living color one stipend. And for the master and PhD program, again, there is no minimum GPA, no minimum score, no subject requirements. We will review the documents holistically, holistically. So please be strongly noted that because we will assess their documents holistically, the competition among applicants are very high. And for the online interview for postgraduate course, the pre-application review and document screening is over. The final procedure will be online interview, so which means that all applicants has to undergo with this online interview process. And after the online interview is over, there will be a result announcement, letter of acceptance, courses, scholarship announcement, enrollment procedures and guidelines will be released. For the important timeline for 2022 September intake, uh, there will be two applications. No three applications for postgraduate course, there will be only first round and final round. For the first round, the pre-application review stage will be open October 18 and closed on November 15. And for those students who have passed pre-application review, they can start applying from, from November 16 and will be closed on November 24th. And offers and scholarship announcement will be released on February 18. And for the regular entry, the second chance, it will be opening from January 1st and application review will be closed on January 31st. And application, the real one, will open on February 1st and it will be closed on February 20. And the interview will be conducted on March and office and scholarship announcement will be released on April 22nd. And again, if you have any questions regarding to our admission schedule for our post-project course, then please consult with Yes Education team. And that's basically it for my presentation. Thank you very much for auditing. All right. Thank you very much, Mika-san. Um, I hope um, that presentation was very clear and, uh, and, and, and uh, well understood to uh, everyone. So uh, before um, me jumping into the question, I just have a uh, quick question for you. So you mentioned mm -hmm. about uh, the postgraduate, uh, sorry, the master's program. Um, yes. So maybe you can clarify a bit more about um, like, you know, the, the minimum GPA uh, so that um, our agent can be more uh, more clarified about it. Uh, as I, I I see that you mentioned that uh, before they can apply uh, online, they have to uh, get the uh, the consent uh, from from uh, from the uh, professors, right? 
Yes, um, to be mm -hmm. honest, as I have said, our master's program is heavily focused on research-based program. So we don't focus so much on GPA. So we don't set any minimum oh, okay. criteria for the GPA. But what we focus mm -hmm. is the content of research proposal. So if the research uh -huh. proposal is not convincing for our professor, then even you have like GPA, perfect GPA like 4.0 or 5.0, mm -hmm. we don't accept those students. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, it's very fair, right? <laughs> yes. All right, so uh, let's get the first question rolling. Uh, we have one question regards to the age limitation. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there any uh, age limit uh, for uh, the UG program and the PG program? Um, for the PG program, there's no age limitation. There's no upper limit and lower limit. But for the UG program, um, there's no upper limit. So anyone can apply. But for uh, as a lower limit, if the student is under age of 18, uh, 18 years old, then they have to consult with our admission team because we have to check whether they really have graduated from 12 year national standard education oh, okay. or not, or they yeah. did grade skipping or acceleration or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that happens. Like mm -hmm. sometimes their, uh, their date of birth is, uh, is it's like after uh, the, the school commenced, so they, uh, they're they not uh, 18 years old enough. So just mm -hmm. uh, check with us and, uh, We'll uh, make sure that uh, the age limit is, is fine with uh, applying for the UG program. All right, um, so next question. I think it's more about the uh, accreditation of the program. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, is the engineering program here uh, under recognized uh, of the Washington Accord uh, or the Sydney Accord? Um, our engineering program, uh, as, our, as far as I have heard, um, once the, our Ministry of Government, the MEXT, has recognized it, and it is also recognized as a Washington Accord. But I'm not sure about what is Sydney Accord. I'm sorry about this. I would. I think the Sydney Accord, Accord is also uh, also the um, the like in the same link with uh, Washington Accord as I just quickly oh, okay, checked. Okay. Uh, All right. Or yeah. So uh, so yeah, Washington Accord. Uh, so it's hmm. recognized uh, under Washington hmm. Accord. Then. Yeah. Hope that answered your question, Michael. Uh, next up um, is the diploma. Um, can uh, so the student that has diploma. Uh, can apply for bachelor. Uh, actually, Perry, um, I'm not sure if you are referring to like high school diploma or like uh, like diploma certificate, like one or two year uh, diploma. So can you, uh, if you please uh, clarify more about which diploma, that would be great. All right. Uh, okay, uh, Michael uh, has another question. So Okay, uh, I think he uh, refers to like uh, other UG program um, of uh, KUAS, whether the international student can apply and uh, the Japanese uh, level uh, is required. Uh, for, for other that. related Japanese program, uh, other related faculties, which is conducted in Japanese language program, it is actually we accept international students, but those international students basically has to come to our campus and take a physical examination. So we don't open up a pathway for international students who are residing overseas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, the student have to be uh, on shore, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so next up. Um, okay, uh, this, this is a question from Haley. Uh, Japanese language course for uh, undergraduates form part of the compulsory uh, module required to graduate uh, and would go towards the student credits. So I guess uh, the credits that the student take for the Japanese uh, course language, uh, would, would that go to uh, the student credit uh, records? That's, uh, uh, that's well, the first part of the question, yeah. Okay. For the first part of the question, yes, the Japanese language is already integrated in our curriculum and it is a credited course, so they, it is totally a compulsory course. If they don't take these Japanese classes and they cannot graduate from our undergraduate program. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, second part uh, of the question is, uh, would there be any certificate to uh, available for students that complete uh, like language classes, like topic, uh, for example, in, in Korea? Like they, they yeah, like them, so. topic in Korea, we have a test called the JLPT. It is acknowledged by the Japanese government. And um, although we make a accredited course for our Japanese language uh, program, we don't force our students to take a JLPT in the curriculum. So if the students want to take mm -hmm. it, then they can take it. But if the student doesn't mm -hmm. want to take it, then we don't force them. But we highly recommend our students to take JLPT mm -hmm. uh, examination because most of the Japanese yeah. companies are requesting JLPT more than and to, to work in mm -hmm. uh, work for international employees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also the uh, the Japanese language course uh, is, is, is also integrated into uh, the curriculum at uh, QS, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. But the examination itself is students have to register by themselves. Yeah, but they have to of course register. our mm -hmm. of course our teachers in international office will help them register so they don't have to worry mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I see. The classes uh, that the student would uh, would usually need to take for the Japanese language course. Of uh, what? Pardon? Um, yeah, so how many classes uh, of, uh, or, or like subjects uh, in, in terms of like uh, Japanese language um, oh, okay. do they need to take during uh, the, in the curriculum? Mm. Um, I'm not sure about the, how many classes. Actually, it, the curriculum map, the how many classes that they have to take is uh, all stated in okay. our e-brochure. So if you want to know basically about it, then please, uh, more okay. detail, then please check our e-brochure. But as far mm -hmm. as I remember, they have to take mm -hmm. like a reading, writing, business, Japanese, and everything. And there's quite a lot number mm -hmm. of Japanese classes. And those Japanese mm -hmm. classes are mm -hmm. focused on first year and second year. Mm -hmm. OK, I see. Uh, so do you have like a separate like uh, language center located in inside campus to teach those courses? Or would a student uh, study in, in inside like the regular classroom? They will be studying at the inside classes. We don't have a center, but we are inviting oh, okay. the Japanese language professional professors to have the lectures. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Um, okay, so next question is about: um, um, the, Is there any uh, is there any chance the student can be cover uh, the expense like? For example, like working uh, in Japan uh, 24 hours a week um, uh, during your studies? No, because our engineering program will be very, very intense. And as I have said, um, mm -hmm. that there is a limitation that 24 hours per week, right? And the dormitory fee mm -hmm. is already 600 US dollar. And most of the Japanese students, they earn around, uh, I would say 400 or 400 or 500 US dollar per month. So I think it will not be enough. Mm. So we recommend our international students to get a scholarship. That will be more reasonable option for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scholarship is, is uh, mm. the way to go. Oh, and, and another information. Certain... Yeah, and another information is that most of the Japanese part-time jobs request Japanese language because the employers cannot speak English. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes, I understand. Uh, all right, so next step is uh, how's the living condition uh, beside uni? So is there any other uh, options for uh, accommodation uh, beside like uh, on campus uh, um, residence? And um, how is the work condition? <laughs> yeah, so I guess uh, you can, yeah. Um, what we can provide for our international student is only the on-campus dormitory. And what another option is that we can provide an accommodation company, but I don't, we don't know that what kind of housing the accommodation company will uh, prepare for students because that has to be done by students and accommodation company directly. So I cannot um, give you a good advices, but as far as I know, the house rent around our university would be very the same as on-campus dormitory. It will be 600 US dollars 
but utility cost and food will not be uh, included in the price. So it will be a little mm -hmm. bit higher. So we highly recommend our international mm -hmm. students to live in our mm -hmm. own campus dormitory. But for religious students, like mm -hmm. um, religious students or um, vegetarians, um, Kyoto City is known as quite friendly for those kinds of cultures. So I think it will not be hard to find foods and other necessary stuff compared to other local cities in Japan. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, so about the work condition, <laughs> not sure um, like what, well, I'm what not sure about the work so, <laughs> Yeah. If the student doesn't know about the uh, language, um, Japanese, so would they still can find a job here? Maybe, maybe that's that's what he meant. Uh, yeah. uh, you mean after graduation? Or? Um, I think maybe during the time uh, they study. You mean like a part-time job? Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so as I have mentioned, um, it's more or less impossible for international students to find a part-time job without knowing Japanese language. Mm -hmm. So what I can recommend um, mm -hmm. international students, the first option is get a scholarship. And another second option is maybe they can focus on studying for the first year. And first year, because we will teach a lot of Japanese for international students and they will be get used to it with the life of Japan. So they can start looking for part-time jobs with little basic knowledge of Japanese. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, so that they can work uh, in in the next uh, in in the second mm -hmm. year and and third year. Uh, okay, so um, there's another question regarding to the visa. Um, so is there any uh, so during the pandemic, is the visa still processing uh, for those students that got accepted to Japanese university? Uh, so there's a recent closure in terms of like uh, the border for international student to go to uh, to Japan. So um, any so yeah, so that that would be more particular for those student uh, wanted to study uh, on campus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, about the visa condition in Japan, as you have mentioned, the visa centers and the embassies are all closing up issuing visa. For well, application for certificate of eligibility, when this is a certificate that all the international students has to obtain when they are applying for visa can be applied. So we are actually processing the COE application for current international students who are waiting to come to Japan from 2021 September. But even though we can obtain the COE, the visa is not issued by the embassy. So we are still waiting for the government updated news. So until that time, um, we have provided the first generation student with two options. The first option is they will take an online classes or on-demand classes uh, after enrolling from September. And once the visa is issued, we let our students come into Japan and also to start offline classes at Kuos. And another option is that we provide a one-year deferment for these kind of international students. So we are quite preparing a flexibility for our international students who are waiting to be enrolled or who will be applying to KUAS in future. Okay, um, I think another question regards to, uh, uh, okay, so the scholarship as well. So about the 100% scholarship, would that be uh, available during the whole uh, course program or is it just for the first year? Uh, it will be for the full duration as long as they can keep up the good grade. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so that good thing is that they're gonna uh, afford for the whole uh, cost year program. I think it's just uh, the standard um, like duration of the cost program, right? Yes, only the standard. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, so about the deposit for um, this question is uh, is asking for the initial deposit would that be for uh for like a year like the, the first year or the first semester the deposit is the payment to university right yes uh it will be for the first semester we request international students to pay the admission fee as a first payment and the first semester tuition fee uh mm -hmm. for the second payment after they pay these two money 
um, we let our students in, and for the second semester, they will pay in Japan. Okay, yeah, good. Um, okay, so next question is working during uh, the study period. Is, that, is there any uh, recommendation that you can give for a student looking for uh, familiarize with uh, the Japanese culture? Uh, you mean the working or the to familiarize with yeah. Japanese culture? Yes, uh, yes, working. Yeah, like oh, okay. any type of like part time job that is, um, you know, like more to like familiarize with uh, the Japanese culture and people. Um, the working conditions, I think it's good, but one thing, as I have said previously over and over again. So one demerit will be the Japanese language. So if you don't know any Japanese language, then it's impossible, basically more or less mm -hmm. impossible for international students to work. But once you can speak Japanese, then Japanese people are really friendly. So they will help you. Um, they will help you with the work. They will teach you uh, what's the Japanese um, traditional culture and you know what they have to do during work and uh, the good places, the good restaurants and everything. So maybe if the international students can speak a little bit of Japanese, then it might be a good option to have a part-time yeah. job. But if they don't know any Japanese, then we highly don't recommend students to yeah. do a part-time yeah. job. Yeah, they would face a lot of um, obstacles and, and difficulties mm -hmm. in terms of like communicating with yeah, yeah. Uh, with the manager and, and the team there as well. So yeah. yes, it's better to studying and, and learning the, the language first. Yeah, and then in addition, yeah. we are afraid that like if international students start working without knowing Japanese and they have a quarrel with employee, employers, um, mm -hmm. we might be called and there might be a trouble and there might be an issue about, mm -hmm. you know, um, COE application visa issuance. So mm -hmm. I would say that it's not a good option. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, next question is about uh, like job opportunity after graduation. Uh, is is a school provide job opportunity for uh, graduate students? Uh, like average salary for uh, new engineering of fresh graduates. Um, for the job opportunities, we have career support center. So they will um, help um, our international students get a job during the final year. So they don't have to worry about it. They're not going to do a job mm -hmm. hunting alone. Our career support center will be there to help uh, the students. And for the engineering graduates and salary in Japan, actually there's not a big gap between the arts major and science major in the salary, but at least um, around 1,800 US dollar for the newly graduates will be paid mm -hmm. for the engineering yeah. students. Mm. Per month, right? Per month, per month. Yeah, yeah, got it. Uh, okay, so that's, uh, that's another, okay, we have another question uh, for PhD students. Uh, so can the spouse and uh, all the child uh, can accompany with, uh, with the students during their studying for PhD? Um, this is kind of hard question for me to answer, but I will give, I will try to give a lot of information for the PhD student. Uh, for the PhD students, uh, normally matured, yes, they can let the students and child or children accompany with them, but when getting visa, they need to show their certificate of solvency that he or she can support one whole family to the Japanese immigration mm -hmm. group, not only himself. So mm. if he cannot, he or she cannot prove that, then there's a high possibility that the visa will not be granted. Mm -hmm. And our professors from engineering department has mentioned that what usually uh, PhD students does is they first come to Japan alone and then let the student, uh, family come later. That will, will increase the opportunity to get the visa okay. higher. Mm -hmm. But still, they need to show the certificate of solvency. So there's a lot of question asking, um, can I get a scholarship and can I bring my family together? But as I have mentioned uh, previously, the scholarship is provided for the students who will be studying a course and not for the families. 
-hmm. So if they want to bring the family, then they, you really need to show the certificate of solvency that they can support their family and they are allowed mm -hmm. to come to Japan. Yeah, financially. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I think, the, uh, can you uh, share your screen again? There's a question uh, about the requirement for Uh, um, this uh, participant has uh, joined later. So that would be for bachelor degree. Uh, this one. Yes. So uh, re the requirements and also, uh, yes. <clears throat> so here is the uh, requirement for the bachelor degree. Maybe uh, you can. Uh, you can uh, like screenshot this and uh, and advice to your students and also for the scholarship as well. Scholarship page. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Yep. Yeah. All right. So hope that helps. Uh, okay, another question in regards to the health insurance. Um, so I think uh, as you mentioned before in the uh, uh, in the tuition fee and, and, and uh, yeah, in the tuition fee page, if you could go back, uh, that would be included uh, for for the uh, tuition, uh, for all the fees included, right? The accidental yes. insurance. This accidental insurance fee is a uh, insurance inside university for four year program duration, one time pay only. Okay, so they only have to pay in the first, uh, in the first uh, initial year payment, right? Yes. Okay, I see. So that would be cover for the whole uh, the whole year program. Yes. Yep. Uh, okay, thank you. All right, so next question. Uh, what is the percentage of graduate employment rate for UG and PG uh, and PhD separately? Um, I'm sorry about this question, but we don't have any graduates yet, so I cannot answer this one. Yeah. So uh, uh, just for more information, uh, QS um, opened the first batch uh, last, um, uh, actually, yes. So uh, September, 2021, yes. right? Yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, we'll see, we'll see um, in- So maybe from, from yeah, 2022, yes. the yes. first graduate from postgraduate student will be there. So we can give you more information of our students yeah. where they actually went and so on. And for the undergraduate student, maybe you should, you could wait for a few more years and I can provide you with more information. Yeah. All right, I think, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Okay. Um, okay, so Michael will send you the uh, PowerPoint re uh, presentation to uh, all of you uh, after the uh, webinar today. So uh, someone asking about the diploma uh, past uh, Suvesh Pahari. Uh, so if you can give us more um, like clarification for which diploma that you are referring to, that would be great. Uh, okay, we have another question from a Vietnamese uh, agent. So do you have any post-study working visa for graduate students? Unfortunately, <laughs> no. Post-study work visa is, I think, only available for Australia. And for the visa-related issues, um, how it works in Japan is like this. Um, students, after getting student visa, they will do a job hunting at the final year during the fourth year of undergraduate program. And once they got an offer, the employing company will help uh, get the students uh, get a working visa. So after graduating from our university, you. Um, mm -hmm the company will automatically give you the working visa. So there will be a mm -hmm. shifting in the visa. But for students, those who couldn't get a job during the final year, then um, they can stay in Japan for six months as an extra um, activities in order to do a job hunting. But if they couldn't get a job during these six months, then they have to go back to their home country. Yes, so um, I think that's it. So Japanese is uh, required um, for, um, for uh, inside the curriculum so that the student yes. has to, has to uh, study. Um, okay. So, okay. Uh, Japanese language class is included in the fee, yes. 
Yes, yes, it's all already included in the tuition fee as it's compulsory. Okay. Uh, all right, I think that's pretty much it uh, for today. Okay. So thank you very much, Mika Sang. Uh, wrap up eight, uh, at exactly, uh, I think now 2 p.m. In, in Kyoto, right? In Kyoto, yes, exactly. Yeah. Thank you very much as well. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Mika Sang. And I hope to. Uh, that this this pandemic is uh, in, under control soon so that we can uh, start traveling again and hope to see you in person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you, everyone, uh, and hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Arigatou gozaimasu. Arigatou gozaimasu. Arigatou gozaimasu. <laughs> Bye. Bye.